Welcome to Actionable Feedback with Seesaw in grades three through five. We're so excited to have you all with us today. Today, we have two amazing classroom teachers and Seesaw certified educators joining us to share strategies and steps that they use to give actionable feedback within Seesaw that supports students' learning and growth. Um, my name is Allie McIntyre, and I am a training and professional development specialist here at Seesaw, focusing specifically in that third through fifth grade band. I'm super excited to be here. I was formerly a fourth and fifth grade teacher, as well as a reading interventionist for third through fifth grade and an instructional coach. And I live in Denver, Colorado, where we got close to, I think, half a foot of snow today. Um, so exciting winter. I'm now going to have Eric and Emily introduce themselves. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Robinson. I'm a fifth grade teacher from Chelsea, Michigan. Uh, this is my 19th year of teaching. Uh, for a long time, I taught littles. I taught kindergarten and first grade. And then this is my first year in fifth grade. So the kids seem really old to me. <laughs> um, and I've been using Seesaw since the beginning and have loved sharing Seesaw with so many different teachers over the years, just because I love sharing something that I believe in and, and, and really love using. So really excited to be here with you all. And I will second. Oh, sorry. You're good. Um, I will second what Eric said in that I love to uh, share Seesaw with other people because it's an amazing platform that all students can benefit from. Uh, I was a third grade teacher. This is year 20 for me in education, but this is my first year being an instructional technology coach. So now I don't get to just have the love of Seesaw in my own classroom, but I get to share it with other people. So um, yeah, and I'm from Quincy. So all right. Awesome. Thank you both. Okay, so we're going to begin by taking a look at two different types of feedback. And as you review these two different types of feedback, I want you to think about the differences between the two. So this is feedback type A, and you can see down below the teacher has said in their comment on Seesaw, great job, keep working hard. And here's feedback type B. The teacher wrote in Seesaw, great job. You showed each step of your long division and all place values are lined up correctly. Now compare your long division and equal group strategy. What do you notice? Use the mic to tell me what you notice and how you will fix your math. So I want everyone to think about what did you notice about feedback type A and type B? Similarities, differences, and then really which type of feedback best supports student growth and learning. And we'd love for you to hop into the chat and share your ideas around this. Which type of feedback that you just saw between A and B is gonna best support student growth and learning? I see Stephanie shares that B was more specific with small groups, ideally type B. B has those next steps, awesome. The second one is specific, gives students the next steps. Oh my goodness, there's so many coming in. Feedback B allows students to reflect on their learning. It challenges students to dive deeper. I'm having a hard time reading all these. Love how kids are encouraged to record themselves. Absolutely, you all hit the nail on the head. And so we all know, as you and you all know this, students benefit most from feedback when it is given during the learning process and supports them to grow towards their goals. And so Seesaw supports ongoing timely feedback that deepens learning. So here's our agenda, our agenda today. Um, we're gonna learn, or you all are gonna learn three ways that teachers give actionable feedback within Seesaw. You're gonna learn how students can give effective peer, peer feedback, excuse me, which is so important, especially as we think of those third through fifth grade students. And then also how to support families in providing feedback on student work in Seesaw. So I'm now gonna hand it over to Emily. All right, thanks, Allie. Well, as we saw in those uh, two examples, feedback can be a really powerful way to enhance that student learning. And so we're gonna jump right into it and find ways to help our students. Uh, feedback is most effective when we utilize it during that learning process, as Allie just said, and when we're connecting it to their goals then students can use the feedback, they can grow in their skills, change thinking processes that happen along the way, and even we can help students to extend beyond the concept or the skills that are being taught. Amazing feedback really has that power to improve student achievement. And as an added benefit of sharing that feedback, 
you'll really see that you're going to be able to build more connections between you and your students and build that that classroom bond. Uh, it's important to remember that effective feedback given during the learning process is going to help them a lot and it will help them to better understand the concepts and students will then even have the opportunities to revise their work and make plans as they keep going. So the first way we're going to look at is to share feedback by using comments inside of Seesaw. And I think you're going to see as we explore a couple of these ways that they are fast, they're easy, and they're effective ways right there in Seesaw. You don't have to go anywhere else. It's built to help your students right there through the comments. All right. So the first piece is you could see when a student makes a post to their journal or completes an assignment in Seesaw, really in either place, before the teacher clicks approve, that's a great time and a place for you to be able to leave a comment for your student. As the student turns in the work, it's very natural. You're going to be assessing their work. It's a nice place for you to leave that feedback. You can just easily type it right there in the feedback, uh, in the comment box right below the student's work. And add on to that, if we go into that idea of actionable feedback, we're looking at a way to share with students some things that they might want to change, some tools or things they might want to change, tools they need to work on a little bit more. And looking at the feedback, your students are going to grow in some areas that they maybe haven't mastered yet. Another great way for you to use that feedback is to notice progress towards a student's goal. Uh, a lot of times our students are making progress towards goals and towards that new learning and even just making a comment and providing them feedback that you're noticing the growth towards their goal will help them to aim and reach a little bit higher for that goal next time. Uh, I always like to say with my students, success breeds success. So as we're noticing the things that they're doing well, they're going to keep wanting to do more of that. The thing I like to also remember is that you're not limited to just typed comments. And I know we saw in the chat, we have teachers across multiple grade ranges. And sometimes we might think that the audio comments are just for our younger learners, but that's not really true. The audio comments really can help our older students too. I think they share in the benefit of getting to hear the teacher's voice, the teacher's tone, uh, and that feedback then also feels more personal to their students. And as a teacher, honestly, being able to click that microphone and give audio feedback is super quick and easy. But either one you choose, they're both gonna be great ways to support your students in growing their learning. Sometimes, in the, in the last example, we were looking at if they need to change or fix things, but sometimes we have students that are doing really well with the work that was assigned or the tasks or skills we're working on in class. They might master it quickly or they've even, uh, teacher uh, golden hour, is that they have even shown interest in learning beyond the classroom. And in the past, those kind of feedback create opportunities in what I like to call my classroom. I like to call it feed forward. And this is when instead of looking back on the work and making corrections or fixing and revising, I stop and think for that student, what's next? Where can I go to support that student to learn even more? Uh, the comments feature allows for me to be able to share links to additional learning or any kind of further opportunities that might help them to keep learning. In this example that you can see up on your screen right here, this is a real life example of an interaction between a student and myself. And we had an activity, uh, you can see it was 2020, we were locked down. We had an activity and he was so interested and through our conversation, I was able to push him to do a little bit more and extend his learning even farther. And the other great benefit for me as a teacher was getting to connect with my student and watch him take on this challenge. It was quick, it was easy, and the best part was it was authentic learning and growth for my student. In this example, you can see that we were stretching a student's learning, but in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to use links to reteach as an option as well. Now, if you are a Seesaw for Schools or a Seesaw Plus customer, your feedback easily becomes something that students are, are going to be able to have the opportunity to improve on. 
So as a teacher, I can include those comments or areas to work on or improve. And I have that option then in the bottom below the item to be able to click the three dots and send it back as a draft. And it becomes returned to the students. They can follow the comments and they can improve their work. This gives them the opportunity not just to learn and find out what they got wrong, but instead to go in and adjust and improve the work. That really high quality piece of being able to learn from the mistakes that we made. And I love this part. When a student opens up the draft, the feedback that you've given them is right there on their creative canvas. They can edit their work while your feedback and the things that you wanted them to focus on is right there in front of them. I think that's really important to give the kiddos that feedback that they can see. It's visible. It's in front of them to help them become more successful. You're, even though you might not be sitting right next to that student, you're still able to support them as they're learning with these new, uh, these new skills or what they needed help with. And how often, mm, all the teachers are probably raising their hand, do we hear them say, I forgot, where's the directions? What did you say? Using the comment feature, you have a nice little recorded spot of where you've left your comments and you can help your students to see that as a regular place to look and improve their work. And once we've supported our students with the comments, uh, then the students are learning some steps also in being able to help themselves grow because they've found ways to fix that. This is another example, and this was a poetry project that we were working on. And in this example, the student was missing a really big part of the goal of what we were trying to work on. So to support the student, the feedback comment was given to help them meet their learning goals. And now your students can jump in, use that comment and make revisions to their work. And this can actually happen in the learning canvas as they're working on things. It's a great way to support them as they're doing the action. So you're catching it as they're, as they're working towards those new goals. The feedback will prove to matter more to the student when they're working on the assignment and they're in there as opposed to later when the assignment's turned in and it's gone when you're catching it in the moment you're really going to be able to help them learn and grow and revise as as learners all right this next piece i'm really excited to get to share with you uh, the second way that we're going to talk about sharing some feedback with your students is to use a fun addition like your Bitmoji and even audio to take that feedback that you're giving to your students and make it a little bit more fun and a little bit more personalized. So I hope you guys like this part because it's I think it's really fun. So here's a fun fact for you. It only takes the brain about a quarter of a second to process visual information. So before I would say anything to you, these fun little cartoons, these bitmojis of me are already sending you messages uh, just through the pictures. The other thing to, to note is that 93% of communication is nonverbal. And across something like a digital platform, using something that's gonna help personalize and connect with your students can help to send emotions, it can help to send a tone, encouragement, uh, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So sending your students these personalized images helps to connect with them. And if you don't have Bitmojis, fun stickers can be another way to help your students really connect with the message that you're sending to them. Oh, and did I mention, they're also a lot of fun. So let's take a look at some examples. So when you're approving your students' work, you can add a Bitmoji, sort of like a digital sticker, right on top of that student's work. So when you're in the approval screen, and you can see here on this math example, uh, the teacher, in this case it was me, was looking through the assignment, and instead of just clicking approve, I clicked edit the post, and I pasted my Bitmoji right there on the student's on the student's work. Uh, and my colleague, Eric, who's gonna be presenting here in just a little bit, has created a great little video to show exactly all the steps. So if I'm going too fast, don't worry, you're gonna be able to follow up with that video afterwards and we'll share those. We're also gonna have some time to explore. But if you're already a pro at knowing how to copy and paste images into Seesaw, then you're already halfway there. Let's see what else we can add to that. I sometimes feel like a, like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. Not only can you add your personalized Bitmoji, 
now that you can add audio to the images in Seesaw, you can click it and you can attach your audio to the Bitmoji. So after you copy and paste your Bitmoji, you click on the three dots of the image. From here, you're going to choose voice and you can record an audio comment that attaches right onto the emoji. And when students get to see this audio and hear the icon, uh, they can listen to their comment and they're gonna feel uh, that it's personalized just for them. So we're gonna take a few minutes now and we're gonna jump in and we're going to explore and I'm gonna show you how we can add a Bitmoji with adding the audio effects to it. So here we go. Let's jump into our Seesaw journal that we have set up. And so you can see we have a couple of different posts on here and I'm just gonna pick this one that's right on top here. And I'm going to click to edit the image. So click and edit post. All right. And I'm actually going to use this one in a little bit, so I'll jump down to this one right here. And I noticed that the student hasn't completed it yet. And that's okay. I want to give them some encouragement to keep on going and get this part done. So I'm going to go up to my Bitmoji toolbar, and I can click right here, and it's going to pop up. You get lots of these fun ones. And I'm going to say, keep going because I can see that they are still going on this. And I like this one. She's happy, she's sassy, excited for that. I then right click to copy the image, copy, and I can jump in and paste it right here on my, whoops, right here on my student's work. Now, to add the piece of uh, adding the audio, I go right below that image, and of course I can resize it and put it wherever I want. I can click those three dots, and I go to voice, and I'll go ahead and test that out for you. See if it works at the same time. All right, we tested the other one, but it doesn't seem like that one wants to show right now. But after you did that, it would record your voice on there. Oh, there it goes. Click record voice. You're doing good. You've got your other pages ready to go. Just keep on going with what you need to do. I hit check and now that comment is ready for my students, uh, for my students to go back and look at. All right, yes, and I see some things happening in the chat. And Eric is gonna showcase that in the video that we have attached. So you will get that video and we will look at it again. Now, here's an example of how I could actually use this in my classroom that uh, helps a student to be able to learn a little bit more. So take a look and let me make sure that share audio is on. There we go. All right, here we go. Hey kiddo, I just noticed that you highlighted all of the words on this page. We were looking only for the long O sound. Go back, look at your words, and highlight only the letter or letters that make the long O pattern. All right, so it's personalized and it goes right in to support your student. All right, oh, there we go. So just a couple of quick steps. Here's a little cheat sheet for you of the steps that we went through is on your computer, download the Chrome extension, search for the one that you want, personalize it. You can even add a student's name and uh, copy and paste it on the post. Go back in and uh, select voice to add your comment. Don't worry about memorizing this. We will share this with you later. All right, a third way to share feedback is a cool feature that's built into Seesaw, and that's the ability to be able to draw and record or even to include a video. So let's take a look at draw and record first. In this example, it seems that subtracting with regrouping is always something that one of my students needs a little bit more practice with. And so by setting up a teaching example just like this, and throwing a friendly Bitmoji on there, I can then go in and use the draw and record tool to teach the concept. Then my students have, after I finished my little mini teach, my students can watch this video. I click the green check at the top and I can send it to one student who I know will need it. I can send it directly to their page 
or I could also send it to sample student and then there's a lot of different ways that I could share it to the students that might need this little mini reteaching. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I would have posted it to sample student and the next step that I would have taken was to take this animation that's going to help my students to learn and give them the support that they need and I would click the three dots and click share item. Once I've clicked that and the pop up shows up, I now have this web address or the URL and you can use this URL anywhere that you would share a normal website or URL to your students. You might share it in a comment. You might share it um, on a student's page. You might even find that sharing it to a parent uh, through their messaging might even support them. Once you have that website, that URL address, you have so many choices of the ways that you can share that little customized reteaching. And they can have that feedback on hard concepts and it's delivered to them so easily. It's almost as a teacher, you can multiply yourself in lots of different places. And I would share more on those, but I know that you guys will find great ways to utilize that in your classroom. All right, another example is that you can make a video right there inside of Seesaw. Maybe they need more than a recorded animation. You can jump right into a student's work. You can uh, hit the edit post and then using the camera tool, go ahead and give your student a short little burst or a video of a reteaching that you want them to have. And all you have to do is edit and add that video and send it right back to your students and they will have that personalized learning right there for them. So here's a little summary on how you can add the video for your students for reteaching. And all of this is going to be shared with you in the follow-up email. So again, if this is speeding by, don't worry, uh, we will get it to you. All right. The other important thing is that we encourage you is to establish a routine or designate time for your students to go back and check to see if they have any posts to revise. If we use this feedback to help them want to, to help them grow or to change their thinking, but we forget to give them time to check it, then it won't become that regular routine. All right, we're gonna take just a couple minutes and I'm gonna show you now how we can jump into Seesaw and add that video piece. So I'll go back over here and in my journal, and this is the one I have pulled up, you can actually see that the student has the inside and outside character traits flip-flopped and I wanna give them a little bit of support on that. I can look right here in the three dots, click edit post. And earlier I added my Bitmoji to this one, but we'll go ahead and go to slide one. So here's where I wanna support my student with feedback to help them learn and grow. I hit the camera, I go to video, we checked this out, so we'll see if it works. Hey, there you go. Now you can see I have two monitors looking back and forth. But I would hit record and I would tell the student the message that I would want to share with them, which might be, remember, inside traits are the traits of how the character feels and the actions they might take. Outside traits are the things that we would see on the outside. Take a look back at your work. When I'm done, I click done and i can move that feedback around and you know maybe even add some arrows to it or color around it so that my student knows to look for that feedback right there again if you have seesaw for schools or seesaw plus you can send it back in draft form or you can send it back and they can watch your feedback later so all right and remember we're going to share this with you later as well so Allie. Awesome, Emily, if you'll head back to that slide deck. Okay. So Emily just shared three ways to give actionable feedback to students within Seesaw. So now I want everyone to think about this question. How are you going to give actionable feedback in your classroom this week? So if you can head to the chat, um, we would love to hear some responses about how you will provide that actionable feedback in your classroom this week. What's the first way that gets you really excited when you think about the three ways that Emily just shared um, about how to provide feedback in Seesaw? 
I know someone already shared that they love the Bitmoji, so that might be theirs. Bitmoji, can't wait to use Bitmojis. Yes, and don't worry, you will get that video from Eric that he created in the email. The video feedback feature, absolutely. They're more likely to check the video than read the comment. It's your face. You can make it super individualized. Um, reteaching videos, Bitmoji, hear and see to help their learning, absolutely. The share link, like Emily said, that creating one share link and sharing it out multiplies you as a teacher, which we know is such an amazing thing to do because you cannot be everywhere at once, even though we would love that. Um, I love this. A lot of Bitmojis and videos, draw and record, the voice recording. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. So now we're going to transition and learn from Eric. Hey, everybody. So we're going to change gears just a little bit here, and we're going to talk about getting students involved in, get, in the feedback process. And this is another great way to incorporate feedback into your Seesaw lessons. We all know that students learn a lot from their peers, and they care a lot about how their peers feel about their work. So students can also comment on each other's posts. Now, this can give them an authentic audience for their work and valuable feedback from their peers. Enabling comments is a valuable opportunity for students to practice digital citizenship. And remember, you as the teacher have all the control as the gatekeeper of which comments get through and which ones don't. So along with providing hands-on scaffolding for digital citizenship, student feedback helps drive that buy-in and that investment for quality work from your students. So using TAG is a concrete way to teach students about meaningful feedback. And you can model and practice this with your students so that they have practice in low risk settings before giving them the opportunity with real world situations where they're really giving feedback to their peers. So this is an example of an activity available in the community library when Seesaw that you can use to get started with your class. Oh, and by the way, uh, myself and Seesaw, we wanna thank uh, Sophia Garcia Smith for teaching the Seesaw community the TAG framework. I know a lot of people have used this over the years uh, from her wonderful work. And I'll put the link, uh, the link for this in the chat so you can assign and practice this in your classroom. But this is a great way to have your students practice it in a low risk situation. Now, as the teacher, it's also important for you to model the tag technique when you're commenting on their work. They're gonna notice what you say and they're gonna model after you. So now I'm not gonna lie and say that I always do the tag technique. Sometimes I'm short on time, but if I have time, I always strive to try to leave better feedback anytime I can. And pro tip, if you're short on time, use the voice commenting feature. You can use comments that mean more and it's a lot quicker. So that's one of the little things that I use with my students all the time. Another great way to ensure that students are getting that meaningful feedback is to enable your class blog. So especially if you're in a situation where you have your settings so that your class is private and students cannot see one another's work, enabling your class blog gives you a place in your Seesaw class where items can be shared with the explicit purpose of being seen and commented on by many stakeholders within your class. So when you enable your class blog, you also need to make sure that your settings are set up so that students can comment on posts in the blog. You can then decide whether you want to give students the ability to choose what goes onto the blog, or you can keep that responsibility as a teacher and you get to choose which items go onto the blog. Another pro tip for you, when you first start out with this, I usually don't give my students that control to add to the blog. I usually take care of it, Otherwise, they start adding every single thing they've ever done to the blog, and it gets a little overwhelming. Over time, we kind of talk about what types of things belong in the blog, what are we really trying to do there, uh, and then I release that control to my students. So here are some best practices when you're thinking about maybe incorporating a class blog into the Seesaw workflow. So the first one is to think of your class blog as like a bulletin board in your classroom. It loses its effectiveness if there are too many items posted there. You need to be aware that comments are mirrored between the blog and the journal. So if you make a, a, you know, a comment on students post in the journal, it will reflect that in the blog and vice versa. So even if it's in the blog, if a student makes a comment or you make a comment, it'll be in their journal as well and any connected family members will be able to see those comments. So they're not private, 
But that's kind of the idea of the blog is to have those public comments for that student. Now, by default, the classroom teacher needs to approve all comments in the blog, which is important, uh, especially if you are getting into situations where there might be an inappropriate post or something like that. I usually will just delete that post. And then we'll either have a classroom meeting about appropriate posts, uh, or it might be something where I need to have that student come and talk to me one-on-one -on -one to figure out what might be going on. And then finally, ensuring classroom privacy is really important. The blog, you want to create a simple password, and I'll take you through those steps in just a few minutes. So as a class, we discuss that the blog is not for all of our posts. That's the first way it's a uh, place to start. So some posts are just for the teacher to see and comment on. While others, like writings, projects, book reviews, examples of our best work, those are all things that are perfect for the class blog. So once you give students this great opportunity, be sure to allow them time to comment and read comments made on their work, right? So you're letting them uh, post things to the blog. Make sure you're building in some time during snack or maybe your morning routine where they can go back and read those comments and see that feedback uh, and that's going to really help to build a culture of collaborative learning and feedback within your class. Now, when a journal post is added to the blog, it allows for everyone in your class and to other connected classrooms, which we'll talk about in a minute, to view that post. It's important to note that even items in the class blog require teacher approval. So when I see that I have a questionable comment, again, I still have control to bring it up with that student or work toward digital citizenship goals. So I just look at it as a great opportunity for my students and I to learn from something real world. I know that when my students are older, it's going to be much more high stakes when they're commenting on social media and things like that. So it's a time for me, maybe not to get too corrective, but just to meet with the class and say, for example, you know, somebody had put a post or a, a comment that said that somebody's work was weird. So I just deleted it. Let's talk about why that might be important to really think about the meaning of our words. So just a little quick idea of some ways that you can build digital citizenship uh, goals right there in the blog. Now, your class blog is also an awesome opportunity to connect with classrooms and see their blogs too. So one way that we use this in my school is we'll have a buddy classroom and we can actually connect our blogs. So when my students click on the blog icon, they can go to our class blog or our buddy classes blog. Now we're in fifth grade, the old kids. So we visit our third grade buddy class and my students are able to leave helpful comments for those third graders. And if you want to see students are excited about getting feedback, when they see that they have a peer, especially an older peer who is making comments on their work, that gets kids really fired up. Now, I saw at the beginning, all these folks that are around the world, you can connect your blog to anybody in Seesaw around the world. So I've seen a lot of uh, examples of teachers that connect through Facebook or other ways, and then they will connect their blogs and they can see what's going on in the class all around the world. So that's another great opportunity right within the blog. So I'm going to take a second just to show you how to activate your blog. And let's see here. Hopefully you all can see that. Okay. So right here, I'm in Seesaw in my class. I'm going to go up here to the little wrench and go into my settings. Okay. When I go down, under families and students, you'll see class blog. Once it's enabled, the first time you do this, it'll walk you through the steps. You'll need to name your blog and some things like that. You'll also notice over here, I know it's a little bit grayed out, but you'll see now I have a new icon as the teacher, your students will too, that shows the blog is one of my navigation options, okay? You can set it up so that students can post the blog or maybe only you want to have that power. You can go through your blog settings this has like your password. You can make a simple password for, for anybody visiting your blog. You can change the appearance, things like that. And this is also where you can connect other blogs. If you click here, you can always jump right to the blog and see what it looks like. So let's jump over there and take a look. So here are items that were posted to my class blog. You can still see, it still says who posted that item and there's a place to comment on it. Okay. Now, when I jump back to the journal, you'll notice that under every post, there's now this little globe icon. So you can all see that. 
That is how you or students would request or try to publish things to the blog. So really what it's doing is it's taking something I've already put into the journal and it's co uh, copying it into the blog. So I actually have two copies of it now. You have it in your journal and you have it in that blog. Okay, so there are tons of videos that you can check out um, that'll take you through more um, about the blog. If that looks like it's a good fit for you, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can get mini trainings right here in Seesaw. You can see there's a mini training available um, and I'll, this will be shared once you get this video tomorrow, um, then you'll be able to check this out. Okay, all right. So take a second and just share in the chat how you get your students involved in giving this peer feedback? So what are some ideas that come to your, uh, your mind when you see these ideas? Let's see, I see um, definitely using the blog. They're some people are going to publish writing. That is a great idea. The buddy class. Yes, Eric, there are a lot of people who loved that idea. Thank you for sharing book reviews, peer conferencing, um, posting work of the week. That is an awesome idea. Keep those ideas coming. We are going to keep chugging along because um, I just looked at the time and oh my yeah. goodness, it's flying by, but keep your ideas coming in the chat so that everyone can see them. Thanks. Yeah, Eric. for sure. For sure. And I'll keep going. Um, so the next part of this is getting families involved in the feedback. So part of the idea of Seesaw is this idea of a learning loop where you have teachers, students, and families all sharing what you're doing in the classroom, taking down those walls and really inviting everyone to give feedback and see that student work. So with students, I know that my students, they want my feedback, but they really value that peer feedback and they value feedback from their parents. So when you uh, are getting started with Seesaw, which hopefully a lot of you are inviting parents to view uh, your, your student's uh, Seesaw journals, one little tip that I always give is along with inviting families, you know, thinking about caregivers, I also will share this invite link. And the nice thing about that is I can send that link out to all my families and say, hey, would you forward this along to other family members, such as grandparents, aunts, uncles, because each student can have up to 10 connected family members to their journals. And I will tell you, pro tip here, usually parents by about two thirds through the school year, they start to slow down on their feedback a little bit and they don't check Seesaw quite as often as I'd like, but grandma and grandpas, they are just the whole year you can count on them leaving feedback and students absolutely love it when those family members outside of their household make comments. So that's a great way to involve them is by using that share link. Now, families can only comment on their own child's work in the journal. So in your class settings, you can decide whether or not you as the teacher need to approve those family comments or you wanna let them just go through. That's really up to you. But when you start including the uh, the blog in the family feedback plan. It allows family members to post comments on all students' posts. So here's where I love this. Let's say you did something with writing and you wanted more than just that uh, child's parents to read it. You wanted more than just students in your class to read it. You wanted to share it with everybody that wanted to read it. Well, if you put that in the blog and you invite families to visit your blog page, then they can make comments on that as well. This works well too for the few students that I have in my class who don't have any connected family members. They may not be getting any kind of comments outside of myself and their peers, but once I have families look in the blog, that's an opportunity for families that might not even know that child to comment on their work. So that's really nice for my students that don't have those connected families. And to invite parents to your blog, you need to share your blog URL. Just having the Families app is not enough. When parents go using the Families app to view student work, it will only take them to the journal. When you share the blog URL, anyone with that URL and your password will have access to give students comments. And then of course, you have the ability to monitor those comments and make sure that they are what you are looking for. 
So this is just quickly, I'm not even gonna live demo this, but where I showed you earlier to get into your class settings, just go in and you'll wanna go and make sure that your blog is password protected. And if you feel like there might be folks that need to not be in there anymore, if you're noticing that maybe somebody shared it too wide, you can always go ahead and change the password and send out the new password to your families so it is secure. Now, another thing I do for family members is I have my students teach them the tag method just to save myself time. I make an activity and give it to my kids. Then I have them explain to their parents, hey, here's how we comment in the classroom. Here's how we choose what to write as comments so that parents have an idea of what our expectations are in the class. And newsflash, your parents are probably gonna watch a video that their kids made rather than something you made as the teacher. So not only am I saving a lot of time by not having to make this video myself, but the parents are more likely to watch their own child saying, hey, parents, here's how we do our uh, commenting in our classroom. So I absolutely love this and parents feel more uh, empowered and they feel like, all right, when I comment, I know what to do now. So it helps with that as well, okay? All right, so I think we got through all that pretty quickly. I was watching the clock, but if you wanna share something in here, go ahead, Allie, you jump right in. Thanks, Eric. You did fly through that. And again, appreciate it. We have so much. We could keep going for another half an hour, I think. Um, as we're wrapping up, first of all, don't forget, you will receive the recording of this in 24 to 48 hours. Um, but I would love last sort of stop and think about what impact after hearing all of this tonight, what impact does actionable feedback have on student learning? And you can plop those in the chat just to leave everyone with some last ideas as we wrap up. And so we'll go to the next and just sort of review what we mastered. We mastered um, a lot tonight. And so the first thing we learned about from Emily is three effective ways to give actionable feedback within Seesaw. We talked about comments. We learned how to add our bitmojis. Um, Eric, if you'll go to the next slide. And then thanks. And then we also learned about how to use that draw and record and video. You also learned from Eric how to teach students to give peer feedback, which is so important and a huge skill, especially with our older learners that needs to be taught and can be taught really easily within Seesaw. And then Eric wrapped up showing everyone ways to support families. Again, that learning loop, so important um, in providing feedback on student work. Now we know this was a lot. There's so much more within Seesaw. And so we're going to plop our training website into the chat. Um, you can find a lot more free trainings, excuse me, and webinars that are coming up. We have on-demand trainings as well. And we just want to wrap up by saying thank you so much. We really appreciate you spending your time with us today. Thank you to Eric and Emily for being awesome Seesaw certified educators and um, willing to spend their evenings. They're, you know, on the central and east coast, so it's a little later for them. Um, any questions that were not answered in the Q&A, we'll get back to you. And again, as a reminder, you will receive a follow-up email in 24 to 48 hours that will have the slide deck, a recording, your certificate of completion, a one-pager with some feedback ideas, and don't worry, that Bitmoji video that Eric created is in there as well. So thank you all so much again for being here. Thank you, Emily and Eric. Um, we hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are, and we'll see you again soon here at Seesaw.